Welcome to the Politics Programme with me, George Hargreaves, and this week my guests are Pastor Fred Plum from the Apostolic Church in Ilford, Mike Natris, MEP for the West Midlands, and Mark Taylor, media consultant. Welcome to the show, guys. And it's been another long week in politics. And what an expensive week it's been. We've got Portugal, we've got Spain, we've got the whole pigs. Who are the pigs, Mike? Portugal, Ireland, Greece, Italy and Spain. Portugal, Greece, that doesn't spell pig. Pig is. <laughs> Portugal. Pig is. You're yeah. absolutely right. Portugal, Ireland, Greece and Spain. Why do they call them the pigs, Mike? Because he spells pig is. <laughs> <laughs> well, this week... they're all in the trough. They're all in the trough. Right. I was waiting for you to get the answer. Okay. £110 billion pounds agreed last night mm. for a Greek bailout. Is this not a Greek tragedy? It is a Greek tragedy. Also for the Portuguese. I mean, I happen to love Portugal. Beautiful country, wonderful place, spoiled again by the euro, because wherever the euro goes, the costs go up, holidays become more expensive. Is it any wonder people go to Turkey instead of Greece. It's because Greece is in the euro. It's very sad because they're both ancient civilizations really, very good traditions, very special people, but one size doesn't fit all. They're different. Well, Mark, they've been saying that this is actually the wrong strategy. Even the Tories have been saying, I've got a quote here from Douglas Carswell, yet again we are resorting to bail out and borrow when we should be pressing for default and decouple. Yes, I think it will happen. I think inevitably we'll see a default. It's amazing how many times we're seeing so many bailouts for something that is it's going to happen. And at what cost when it does happen? So, well, the Greeks will never catch the Germans, and that's the whole point. If you're going to have one euro, you have to have one economy, one fiscal system. You've got to have taxation the same throughout the whole of the EU. I would be against this because I'm against a federal Europe and I don't believe that we should all have to wear the same currency and have to do all these things together because I'm pr proud of our traditions and we're world traders, not European traders. However, if you're going to make the euro work, you have to integrate and that's what's necessary. If they want to do it, that's good for them, but I don't think we should be there. But let's face it, we have our other uh, responsibilities throughout the world. We have the Commonwealth and there are grave cases in Commonwealth Africa, there are grave cases in Commonwealth Asia and we should be concentrating on them because Britain has always been a world trader. It always has been, not a European trader. And now we have a situation where we're trying to export to the EU and they're making everything we make. How does that work? And also, if we send money there, a lot of it is misdirected. For example, you've got Bulgaria and Romania. If, if money goes into those countries, frankly, the Mafia get it. We know this yeah. because we have Bulgarian MEPs telling us that the Mafia actually run the country in Bulgaria and they've got the money. That's their excuse if you send them money for schools, hospitals and infrastructure. As a British MEP, uh, how can you justify, or, or can you justify, that Britain is paying towards the euro that it's not actually in? A bailout for the euro? In my opinion, that's completely contrary to what the British people voted for and what we want, because we're not in the euro. It's like saying the United States have got a problem, are we going to subsidise the dollar? And I would say no again. Or any other country throughout the world, we have our pound to protect. I feel that the government are trying to stay in line with the euro in the future hope that somehow we are going to integrate with the euro. So they want to subsidise this and at the same time bring the pound down for trading reasons with, with Europe. But that's not necessary because we shouldn't be doing what we are doing. We have an adverse balance of trade with Europe. If we left tomorrow, Europe, they would still trade with us. They're forced to. They send all our cars here. They send their cars here. They send all sorts of stuff. As I say, it's an adverse balance of trade and we should be trading with the world and Europe. But we don't need to be in the European Union subsidising their currency to do that. I think we should, in this country, we should be standing up a little more for our own people yeah. um, in terms of what's been going on, what our government has been doing over the last year or so. We seem to have a, what I see as a, a European friendly government, a, a mm. prime minister who may be a nice guy, uh, I hope he is, I'm sure he is, but he, he's going over there and what, what seems to be pouring billions into this big black hole and yet over here what have we had? We've had families 
uh, with children. They've lost EMA during the last year. At the moment, you may, some families watching this will be aware that they're being sent forms to say that uh, their child benefit may be stopped and we've got that 26,000 cap. These are the effects on our country of cutbacks. You know, I think there's a lot of angry people in this country. There is a lot of angry people in this country because mm. the government seems to take more care of people outside of in, in this European Union than its own. And I think this, it's creating an absolute angry generation. Yeah. Mm. And I think this is a part of yes. the riots, you know, and uh, we are, the people, the people in this country are getting resentful of what's happening in this country. So if you agree or disagree, let us know on the email, live at revelationtv.com. Mike, you were about to chip in. I just wanted in. to say that we were actually conned into the European Union in the first place because Ted Heath actually said to us that we would go in with no loss of sovereignty. We could still run our own affairs. We've got Barroso, who is the, who is the president of the Commission, saying on a monthly basis, and this is exactly what he says, he says, this is the new European empire into which you, you have all pulled your sovereignty. So, you know, we say it's not the Fourth Reich. Reich is the German word for empire. Yeah. Of course it is, it is the Fourth Reich. Somebody who does have a place to live is Abel Qatada. <laughs> I don't oh, care well. if his name is Abel Banana. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, this country should decide who stays and who doesn't stay. And if people talk in the way he has talked, he should go back to where he came from. But guess what? They don't like him there either. And that's the problem. So the, the Strasbourg Court, the European Court of Justice, say, OK, you can't send him back. So this who is says guy, we can't? This is a guy who's, oh. who's been um, in jail for for inciting yeah. uh, terrorism and, and uh, hate against the nation. It's another consequence of being in the European Union, isn't it? Because we, we don't have any say, really, in who comes in. If, if viewers don't know that, anybody from within the European Union can go off to another country. We, as the UK, cannot say no to someone. And yes. then, when, when we have this, it's like, we, we, it's like we're powerless. Well, How have we got to that stage? Effectively, we don't have an immigration policy because of Europe, because there are 27 states and free movement between all 27. Mm. So if Romanians, Bulgarians, Austrians, anybody wants to come here, we can't stop them because they come in. Admittedly, their passports, or not even that, their, their documents are looked at, at as they come in. So we should know who's coming in, but I don't think they keep that record. But there it is. They can come in as and when they like and leave yeah. or get employment to do what they will. So you never know if there's going to be millions coming next Wednesday mm -hmm. and how can you allow for that with schools, hospitals, roads Absolutely. and everything else. You need control when you're running a country. You need to know how those very, well, the, the, the revenues that we have to uh, get for the government to do all that, it's necessary to plan that. We, we don't know what's going to happen next. So I think the EU is a terrible thing with regard to our policies of just trying to run the country. And isn't one of the main problems with the European Union is that whilst you might have 20 odd countries, they don't all respect law in no. the same way. No, they don't. And the EU has made more law for us in 35 years than we've made in 400. <laughs> it's, they're, they're chucking uh, law out at us like there's no tomorrow. And of course, the more law you get, the less you understand, the more of those laws you break, and then you get to the state like yeah. in Italy where they just ignore traffic lights because they think it's a joke. Yeah. And you don't know which laws to obey and which laws not to obey. Mm. And that's the, that's the terrible thing about overproduction of law. But, but you're, you're a member of the European Parliament. Don't you get a chance to debate these laws? Absolutely. I vote no, because I think laws should be made for us in Westminster, not in Strasbourg or Brussels. Interpreters. Interpreters. The, a lot yeah. of money is spent on interpreters. Absolutely. In the parliaments, and, uh, well, for example, uh, it was uh, Ireland that was the 32nd language. You'd, you'd, you'd expect with 27 states, at least some of them would share a language, like Austria and Germany, German. Even, what did you say, Ireland? Even, yeah, Ireland was the 32nd. And I stood up in the parliament uh, and was booed. 
because I said it's going to cost 1.4 million a year to translate into Irish and there's only one person in this parliament who understands Irish and he understands English perfectly. Boo, boo, boo. And I got into all kinds of trouble there. I walked out into the corridor, let me tell you, and I walked down there. I was blocked by five Germans who said to me, what have you got against the Irish? And I said, absolutely nothing. One of my great-grandmothers was from Galway, so I'm one-eighth Irish. And in any case, I was born in Yorkshire, and they don't talk here, they don't translate Yorkshire here, do they? And one, they all looked at each other then, and one said, but you speak English in Yorkshire. And I said, and it's cellar oil, where mucks lats on twinders, we've used up as coil, and we reek down to cinders. When bum bailiff comes, I'll never finders, because we reek down in cellar oil, where mucks lats on twinders, translate that into Latvian. <laughs> <laughs> and walked, and they were going, what's going on? So yeah. Over a million quid for one guy. Why didn't they just build a hospital? 1.4 million. Well, that's what I actually said. I said, why, don't, why isn't that donated to an Irish hospital?